Hey everyone, today we're diving into the fascinating and mysterious world of the Basques, a unique group of people living in Western Europe. You've probably heard of them or their distinct language, but did you know that their origins have been a big puzzle for historians and linguists alike? So let's unpack the story behind the Basques and their language, which is actually the only pre-Indo-European language still spoken in that part of the world today. That makes it pretty special. So, where do the Basques come from? Well, there are several theories. The most widely accepted one suggests that the Basques are native to the region between northern Spain and southern France, and that their language developed there over thousands of years. This means they're not connected to any other modern languages, making them a bit of an enigma in the world of linguistics. Another theory, known as Basque Iberism, suggests that the Basque language might be related to the ancient Iberian language, hinting at some kind of connection between the people who spoke them. Then there's a more out there idea that ties the Basque language to languages spoken in the Caucasus region, suggesting that they share some uncommon linguistic features. It's a bit of a wild card, but it shows how unique the Basque language is. Now, if you dive into some genetic studies, things get even more interesting. It turns out that Basques have unique genetic markers that set them apart from other European populations. Some scientists believe that modern-day Basques are closely related to the ancient people who lived in the region during the Paleolithic and Mesolithic periods. This is backed up by DNA analysis, which shows that Basques have a mix of ancestry from both early European farmers and local hunter-gatherers. One particularly intriguing study suggests that the Basques might even be related to the people who lived in Britain and Ireland after the last Ice Age. This theory comes from genetic similarities and the distribution of a specific haplogroup, known as R1b, which is found in high frequencies in both the Basque country and places like Wales and Ireland. But here's where it gets even more mind-blowing. A study from 2015 found that Basques likely descend from Neolithic farmers who mixed with local hunter-gatherers. These early farming communities were the closest ancestors to the Basques we know today. Over time, the Basques became genetically isolated from other European groups, which is why their genetic makeup is so distinct. So, what does all this mean? Essentially, the Basque people are a unique blend of ancient European groups that have stayed somewhat isolated over thousands of years. This isolation has preserved their language and culture, making them a living link to Europe's distant past. It's like they're a window into a world long gone. Isn't that fascinating? The Basques are like a hidden treasure trove of ancient history, right in the middle of modern Europe. Their story reminds us just how rich and diverse human history is, even within a relatively small area like Europe. So, next time you hear about the Basques or their language, remember, they're a living mystery, holding on to secrets from thousands of years ago. And let's talk about the linguistic side of things, which is just as intriguing as the genetic and cultural aspects. Now, the Basque language, known as Euskara, is surrounded by a bunch of theories and debates, especially when it comes to its origins and connections with other languages. One of the main discussions revolves around the roots of some Basque words, especially those related to tools. For example, some researchers have suggested that several Basque terms, like the word for axe or ascora, might originally come from a word meaning stone or ites. The idea here is that these words could have ancient origins, possibly dating back to when stone tools were common. However, this theory is controversial and not widely accepted anymore. More recent studies suggest that these words are actually borrowed from Latin or have different roots entirely, which throws a bit of a wrench in the whole Stone Age connection idea. Then there's the theory known as Basque Iberism which suggests that Euskara might be related to the ancient Iberian language spoken on the Iberian Peninsula. This theory has been around since the time of the Roman geographer Strabo, who noted some similarities between the people and languages of the Basque region and those of ancient Iberia. However, not everyone is convinced that there's a direct link between the two languages. 
Some experts argue that any similarities are simply due to geographical proximity rather than any deeper linguistic kinship. Another intriguing yet debated theory is the supposed connection between Basque and the languages of the Caucasus, like Georgian. Some researchers have pointed out certain typological similarities, suggesting a possible link. However, linguistic experts like Larry Trask have criticized these comparisons, noting that they often mix and match features from different Caucasian languages, making it hard to draw solid conclusions. And then there's the more outlandish Vasconic substratum theory, proposed by Theo Venman. He suggested that many place names across Europe might have origins in a prehistoric language related to Basque, implying that the first Europeans might have spoken a language family connected to Euskara. This idea is pretty controversial and not widely accepted among linguists, as most believe Europe was home to a variety of languages even before the spread of Indo-European languages. All these theories highlight just how unique and enigmatic the Basque language is. Whether it's through the controversial etymology of words, debated linguistic connections, or theories about ancient European languages, the story of Euskara is a complex tapestry that researchers are still trying to unravel. It's a perfect example of how languages can preserve clues about our distant past, even as they continue to evolve and change over time. And now let's delve into what the Romans recorded about them. Roman historians and geographers like Pliny the Elder, Strabo, Ptolemy, and Pomponius Mela provided some of the earliest written accounts of the Basque people. Back then, the region that we now call the Basque country was inhabited by a mix of Aquitanian and Celtic tribes. Among these were the Vascones, who lived on both sides of the Pyrenees, speaking a language similar to or possibly the same as Proto-Basque. Other tribes like the Karastai, Vargili, and Otrogons were also present in areas like Biscay, Gipuzkoa, and Alaba. However, it's not entirely clear whether these groups were originally Aquitanian or Celtic. They might have been Celtic tribes that eventually adopted the Basque language and culture through contact with the Aquitanians. Strabo, writing in the first century AD, mentioned the Vascones living around the town of Pompolo, which we know today as Pamplona, and the coastal town of Iaso, now identified with Arun. He also listed other tribes in the region, including the Vargili, Karastai, and Otrogons, who lived between the Vascones and the Cantabri. Ptolemy, writing about a century later, also noted these tribes and identified several towns in the region that were associated with the Vascones. This indicates a significant presence of these tribes in the area, which straddles the modern border between Spain and France. Interestingly, across the border in what is now southwestern France, there were the Aquitanian tribes of Gascony. These tribes spoke a language distinct from Celtic, which is thought to be a precursor to modern Basque. Although no complete texts in this ancient language survive, we have records of personal names from Latin inscriptions, hinting at a rich linguistic heritage. It's fascinating to think that these names and the language they represent were part of a broader, pre-Roman cultural landscape that included both sides of the Pyrenees. Now, shifting gears to the more mythological aspects, during the 14th and 15th centuries, a series of legends emerged to highlight the distinct identity of the Basque people. These legends weren't just stories. They were political tools used to emphasize the uniqueness of the Basques and their traditional laws, known as the Fuero system which regulated their relationship with the ruling crowns of Spain and France. One of these foundational myths claimed that the Basques were descendants of Tubal, a grandson of Noah, making them one of the oldest peoples in Europe. According to this legend, after the confusion of languages at the Tower of Babel, Tubal and his descendants, the Iberians, settled in the Iberian Peninsula, including the Basque region. This story was meant to explain the unique Basque language as one of the original languages created after the Babel incident. Another myth, known as Basque Cantabrism, centered on the Cantabrian Wars, a series of battles between the Roman Empire and the tribes of northern Spain. This legend reinterpreted historical events to cast the Vascones as the central figures in these wars, thereby highlighting their valor and distinct identity in the region's history. 
This narrative was particularly popular among Basque nationalists in the 19th century, who used it to promote the idea of a distinct Basque nation. These stories and historical records give us a glimpse into the rich and complex tapestry of Basque identity, blending real historical elements with legendary narratives. It's a fascinating blend of fact and fiction, all aimed at preserving and celebrating the unique cultural and linguistic heritage of the Basque people.